Hello, and welcome to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be solving leak code problem 695, max area of an island. Not only is this question extremely popular for coding interviews, it also serves as the basis for a lot of questions you're going to see on leak code, and therefore a lot of questions you might encounter in a coding interview. So you definitely want to know this one, or at least how to do um, the underlying logic for it. So let's jump right in and actually read the prompt here. You are given an M by N binary matrix grid. An island is a group of ones, representing land, connected four directionally, horizontal or vertical. You may assume all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. The area of an island is the number of cells with a value one in the island. Return the maximum area of an island in the grid. If there is no island, return zero. Okay, so we can see from this example grid that we're given, um, we see that you know it's zero to represent water and one to represent land. And the answer we're looking for here is six. Now let's actually walk through this and see how they got that. So we can see this first island here has an area of one because there's only one tile. This next island here has an area of four because we have one, two, three, four uh, tiles connected. This one also has an area of four, uh, one, two, three, four. This one has an area of five, as we can see, but this one actually has an area of six. And then this one down here has an area of five. So that's uh, all the areas we have, and obviously the greatest area here is six. But how might you actually go about solving this? Because it looks quite easy visually, but we actually need to do this in code. So it is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Well, if you've never seen this type of problem before, I'm just going to tell you immediately that it's going to be solved with a depth first search. And the reason that we want to do a depth first search here is that every time we encounter a piece of land, we need to then search for all the other tiles that it's connected to four directionally um, that are also land. And then we can add them to our count of the area for that island. And what we want to do actually is that when we encounter an island um, piece, so basically a one, we want to then set it to zero, which will prevent us from accidentally um, going back on ourselves in a depth first search. Typically, if you do a depth first search in a graph or um, a binary tree, you have a scene set, which is going to basically tell you where you've been to make sure that you don't enter into a cycle. So we need to set um, these values equal to zero when we actually get to them in order to prevent us from going in an infinite loop because then we'll never actually solve the question and we'll just get stuck. So conceptually, that's how we want to do it. But let's actually look at the editor and see how we're going to code this up and pay attention to the implementation detail because this sort of depth for a search pattern is going to be used in so many questions across LeetCode and you will definitely encounter it at some point whether you're prepping for an interview or you're actually in the on-site interview. So please pay attention, learn how this pattern works because you're definitely going to be using it um, pretty much everywhere. Now that we've seen how we might solve this problem conceptually, let's actually write the code so you can see the implementation. We know that what we're looking for is the max area of an island. So let's actually define a variable for that. So we'll say max area equals zero. And if you remember, every time we see a one, what we wanted to do was kick off a, a depth first search in four directions, going up, down, left, and right, in order to find any other uh, ones, which represent land, that that current island might be connected to. So we're gonna need to define those directions. So we're gonna say directions is gonna be, all right, so we can define all the four directions we can go in, and the order does not matter here. All right, that should, whoops, uh, zero and then minus one, right. Okay, cool, we've got all four directions, perfect. So conceptually, what we wanna do is we want to go through our grid, row by row and column by column, and every time we see a one, we wanna basically find the area of that island and then continue and we're going to update our max area with the maximum of the current max area and the island that we just found the area for. So let's write that out. So we're going to say for row in range lang grid. So this is going to represent the number of rows in the grid. And we're going to say for column in range len grid 
zero. So this is going to represent the amount of columns in the grid. We're going to say area is going to be a function called find area, which we'll define in a second. Uh, and we're going to pass the grid into it, and we're going to pass the current row and the current column. After that, once we found the area, what we can do is we can say max area. It's going to be the maximum of max area and area. Excellent. And at the end, all we would need to do is return our max area. So let's actually define our function to find this area here. So we're going to say def find area. We're going to take the grid. We're going to say the current row and the current column. Cool. So if we look at our grid here, if we're at this one and we try to go up, well, then we would actually be outside of the grid. So we need to make sure that we're actually in the bounds of our grid before we do any sort of processing in this find area. Otherwise, we'll try to access you know, an index in the grid that doesn't exist, and then our function will blow up, and we'll fail the interview. We're never getting that job, and we're going to be broke forever. Oh, no. So <laughs> instead, what we want to do is, uh, you know, jokes aside, we want to make sure that we're in the bounds, right? Because we want to make sure that we're actually uh, accessing the correct indice here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check that boundary. So we're going to say, OK, is our current row within the bounds of our you know, rows, right? Is it between 0 and the length of um, the number of rows? If it is, then it's, it's valid. And the columns has to be, have to be valid. So cur column less than grid of 0. All right. So we also want to make sure that we're at an actual one here because we don't want to be counting areas uh, unless we're at an actual one, which represents land. So we need to say and grid of cur row cur call uh, equals to one. So make note of what we're doing here because this pattern is used in so many places when you do a depth first search like this. So memorizing that you need to check your boundaries and whether or not your current uh, cell value is actually valid is something that you're going to be doing. So make note of this. At this point, what we can do is we can say, okay, well, remember how we said we would need to make sure we don't get caught in an infinite cycle. Well, the way we're going to do this is we're actually going to overwrite the original uh, grid and set that value equal to zero. And because we have this check for the current cell being a one, now, if we ever come back to the current cell that we're at, we will actually just skip over it because we have already visited it, right? We don't want to be double counting anything. We don't want to get caught in an infinite loop. Now, this does assume that you're actually allowed to change the input given to you. Sometimes your interviewer might be sneaky and say, hey, you can't actually do that. In this case, what we would need to do is actually define a data structure for um, keeping track of where we've been before. So you could use a set, so you could do an easy constant time lookup of the, um, you know, the tuple representing the current row and the current call, which is your, um, you know, your current coordinate. So that's something to keep in mind. For this problem, we are allowed to modify the grid, so that's not a problem. But do know that sometimes you won't be able to modify that input, or your interviewer will say, hey, I don't want you modifying the input, do it another way. So just know that you can use a set to do it. Um, you will pay a penalty in that you have to you know, declare a new data structure for, and, you know, there's some memory costs associated with this, but that's the only other way if you're not allowed to do that. Anyway, digressing, we're going to set this equal to zero so that way we don't get caught in an infinite cycle. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say our area is one because we know that our current cell is one. So that means that this island um, that we're at has an area of one. And what we want to do is we want to go four directionally to find any other um, pieces of land that are touching this one and we're going to add their areas to our current area of one. So we're going to say for row increment, column increment uh, in directions, we're going to say area is going to be plus equals find area of grid. So the current row plus um, the row increment, right? Because that means we're changing the row. And then we're going to do the current column plus the column increment. And that's going to be the area there, right? And then we can simply, let me just move this so you can see more of the code. And then uh, after we go in all four directions, then we can simply return the area. Now, what happens if actually we were outside of the bounds or we went to a zero? Uh, what we want to do here is if we don't have 
you know, a special return, then we're actually going to return null. And, you know, that's going to be an issue. So we actually want to return zero here. So if we're out of the bounds, we're just going to return zero. So that way, when we add areas, um, you know, adding zero doesn't change our answer. So it's not actually going to affect anything. So for example, this one, if we tried to go up, we would simply add a zero, which doesn't change our answer. And it makes sure that our input um, doesn't blow up. So when we implement this, we can actually submit it and see that it's going to work. Cool. So that's how you solve max area of an island. Like I said, this pattern of doing a depth first search where you have your four directions and you need to make sure that you're in the valid bounds and some other cell condition is met is very common across multiple problems uh, in leak code. And it serves as the basis or sorry, the foundation for a lot of problems down the line. So you definitely want to know this one. Uh, I guess before we wrap up here, let's actually think about the time and space complexity. So in the worst case, our entire grid is actually going to be ones. Uh, and we're going to have to iterate over the entirety of the grid um, to do that. So we would touch every single element. So that means our time complexity would be uh, rows times columns. And the space complexity here, well, if we want to count the recursive uh, stack frames as actual space, then it would also be big O of R times C, which is rows times columns. If we don't want to count, uh, not counting um, stack frames, this would be an O of one solution because we're not actually defining um, any sort of you know linear based uh, space here. We do have directions, but this is a constant time declaration and nothing else here uh, actually requires space. So that would be our um, time and space complexity for this algorithm. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my other Leak Code videos if uh, you're prepping for an interview and you'd like to prepare in the best way. See you in the next one. Bye.